Hi everybody. Welcome back and welcome to those of you that are new. Thank you Gail Augustinelli for helping me out. <laughs> I went from 300 subscribers, a little over 300, to over 500 and it happened just in the last like 36 hours and I could not thank you more for being such a wonderful, wonderful supporter. I hope you see this. I know you don't have much time on your hands. Got the boys there this weekend. I know, I just watched your video. But um, I wanted to thank you <laughs> on video and in person and hope that you see this. I couldn't be more grateful. And I'm grateful to all of you that are new to my, my little YouTube channel here. And to those of you that have stuck through thick and thin with me and me gone missing and stuff like that. And all the comments. I am so appreciative of all the comments. I really, really appreciate it. My last video was very quiet. I have moved locations. I used to be in uh, the sunroom upstairs in our house. And I was struggling <laughs> with space management there was only like one corner wall where I could actually put a bookcase or anything to hold things. I had stuff all over the floor. I had five of those three tier rolling carts up there. I had tables with stuff piled on it. I had a dresser in there with stuff in it. I could not keep it neat and it was driving me insane. However, I sorely miss the sunroom. <laughs> so, but I can't have it back because we've turned it into a sunroom and um, my husband moved a desk. Well, the desk I was using, he's using for his work now. And um, it's just better as a sunroom. There is a spare bedroom upstairs. I may move some of my stuff into because I have bad knees and the steps to come down here are killing me. I like being in a smaller room. It feels more cozy to me. And I think it's better for recording. So I'm going to test this out. If this video doesn't work, you'll never see it. So it won't matter. I'm also self-conscious when I'm speaking to you because he can hear me upstairs. I know he can because I could hear him when he was working down here. And I get self-conscious of talking to an iPad. <laughs> Go figure. Um, anyway, so today I'm going to show you something that has changed my ability to put signatures into a cover. And this may not work for you, um, but it has worked for me. It has um, made it a lot easier. I've been selling the ephemera folios. Thank you again, Gail Augustinelli, um, for showing them on your um, videos and for putting my link below your videos. Um, I could not be more grateful again. And so they've been selling pretty quickly. I can't, like I would have to sit at my sewing machine for days on end to keep enough in the Etsy shop in order to keep up with the, the sales. I am ever so grateful and I know it probably won't last forever. So I'm trying to take advantage of it while while I'm hot on the market, <laughs> um, I do currently only sell within the U.S. However, someone from Norway did contact me and begged me very sweetly to um, ship a couple to her. And so they are on their way there to her. Hi, if you're watching. <laughs> and um, it was an experience. It's not cheap to ship them. They're very light but um, it was $24 to ship two to Norway. Yeah, um, if you're willing to pay that and I can get the shipping to you, or if it's more than that, then, um, you know, I add a couple dollars for my shipping supplies. But if, if you really want one and you're overseas, send me a private convo. So anyway, um, yesterday I worked on six covers for ephemera folios and today I worked on enough pockets this morning um, it took me an hour to cut the pockets and it took me about an hour and a half almost two hours 
to sew the pockets for, excuse me, enough for two folios. I have a journal that I'm in the middle of making and I would really like to finish it. <laughs> so as soon as I'm done with this video and putting these two folios together and taking photographs outside in the broad daylight, um, not direct sunlight, in the shade of the broad daylight, um, and I list them on my Etsy, which will probably happen sometime tonight. It's Sunday and it is September 22nd. So if you're watching this anytime, uh, you know, in the days or weeks or months or years following this, you know, it's September 22nd, 2019. So um, I'm hoping to get two of these in the Etsy shop tonight. If you want them, grab them. There are four more coming. I don't know if I'll have them done by midweek. I'm going to try for that, but I have a couple of appointments this week that I have to get to. So this is one of the covers that I made. Um, it is not, um, let's see, it is a double-sided paper. Some of them I made, I did not have a double-sided paper. So I did glue and sew two, um, two pieces back to back. So, um, and I do, as you can see, oh, well, see, I gotta stay in the light. My lighting down here is not nearly as good either. Um, I do sew, can you see the sewing? I sew this on, I glue it and I sew it. And per our dear Gail's request, I have started putting these little strips in here so that if you put something tall in these pockets, they will not flop around. So they are on all four of the pockets. And this particular one, all of the ones I've made this time, all are flip out covers. Sometimes if I just have a, a paper that has only um, one sided paper and the other side is white, I will simply fold this in half and glue it and sew it. So you, you still have a pocket here and I still put a band up here. I don't have one at this moment that I've made, but it just closes like that. So the only thing you're missing on those is the flip out. So if I ever list those in the uh, Etsy shop and you want to see them, you can come here and, and see them, you know, have that explanation. Now, the thing that has saved me is um, I actually had a much bigger one of these. Um, and when I was trying needle felting, I, um, I'm going to mess with my light a little bit here and see if I can improve it. Okay. Um, hopefully you can see clearly. I uh, was trying needle felting, and I have this big, ginormous, green, you can't even see my hands, and I have my iPad up as far as it goes, um, foam block. It's, it's like a pillow form. See? So this is... Um, this particular one is, um, it's two and three quarters inches thick, and in centimeters, that's like uh, seven centimeters. And it is, now I need a bigger ruler, it is 14 inches square. My other one was, I think, thicker than this and much bigger, as I said, and it it was a little unwieldy. <laughs> so we were in Hobby Lobby one day looking at other things and my husband said, wouldn't this be easier to use? And I said, why, yes, it would. So we picked this up and um, I have my, let me move this over for a moment. I have my tray and this is all of my book binding stuff. Right now, I have this all, which is um, very thick. When I poke through things, it gets very thick, very fast. I think you can, can see that. It's not the best light, but you can see it. So I don't use that all. I have this Tim Holtz one. Um, Tim Holtz Stonic? No, Tim Holtz so uh, Tonic Studios. Duh, Martha. And this one is much thicker thinner and actually works much better and it's the size is besides the point is consistent all the way up and it's retractable 
and I like that because sometimes we travel and um, I used to use this little cutting board. I don't need it so much anymore, but I'll show you why. I also have a bunch of clips. Now, this this set of clips, I got, they come in a little bag with all these cool colors. And um, I got these at Bed Bath & Beyond, just so you know. Um, and then, you know, I also have the little, um, some Tim Holtz clips or the Paper Studio from Hobby Lobby brand. And I also have several of these. This is um, like a, a thin chipboard. And what I've done is I've made my five hole, um, let me see if I stick it under the light. I've made a five hole template. And odd numbers are a lot easier than even numbers. There's a clue for you. This is a bunch of waxed thread. It's from Tandy, T-A-N-D-Y, light? Nope, too much light. Tandy Leather Factory. This is how it used to come. Um, I used to buy it in Michael's or Joann's in their leather department. I don't think it comes in these spools anymore. Um, I did get this waxed linen cord, which I have no idea. Oh, it's a, it's a Walmart brand. It's very similar. Uh, trying to cut the glare, too much light, not enough light. There's the information on it. I haven't looked recently to see if they still have this. Couldn't tell you what department I bought it in. No clue, but it's waxed linen cord. Okay. Um, I used to make rhythm beads for horses to wear, like big beaded with the plastic pony beads and bells, necklaces for horses to wear when they ride. We don't ride anymore. So um, I also have this box that I bought at a shop that is not really local to me, but it's a privately owned shop in Clifton, Virginia. And she had a set of three of these. There was brown, black, and the kind of off-white. Okay, so there's that. So there's the black. Um, and I will need my thread. This is a little package of needles. You can buy these in like the embroidery department at Walmart or most of the stores, Hobby Lobby and stuff. And I just keep a variety of needles in here. So the one I use is either this one, which is very blunt, but it's got a big eye in it. Or I use this one, which is longer and sharper and has still a pretty... Let me see if I can get it to show. Pretty good size eye in it. So um, I use one of those two. These other ones I just keep because if we're traveling, I have some things to, if I'm knitting, I can use some of the needles for that. If I have to sew a button on, I've got a needle for that. So I use those. Um, and I use this and the cord mostly and my template. So I'm gonna set this aside. And I am going to pull my little foam thing over here. And I do need clips. So usually the binder clips, I think, are a little deeper than these clips. So I use the binder clips on this part. Because i got to make sure the template sticks. And what I do is this template is not quite as um, long as my spine. But... Um, I center it so where I want my signatures to sit on the spine is where I put the the template and I bend the pages up to see if I've got it centered pretty much <laughs> in between so you know a signature won't be bumping into the cover we don't want that let's go a little bit okay and okay and then I clip it. So, I'm sorry, my, my nose is running. We went somewhere today that had new carpet installed in it. And the chemical smell was so bad. It was awful. So, okay. So, here's how easy this is. You don't need a wooden cradle. You don't need... Now, I would say that you need probably at least 
three inch foam, like I said, this is this is a little over three. Because if you're doing this on your lap or something, or even on your desk, you don't want your needle, it depends on how, how long your awl is too. Um, you don't want it to go through and damage <laughs> your lap <laughs> or a desk or anything else. So this is so easy. You just punch. You just find the hole. Now I'm going through, I have double um, cardboard, not cardboard, cardstock. I have brown cardstock in the inside this canvas. Plus, this is outdoor canvas. There's two layers of that. Plus, there's glue. And I'm going through all of that with absolutely no problem. This thing is not shifting. It's not moving around. I just hold it firmly with my other hand. And I go through the holes that are already in the template. There, I'm done. And your holes come out. I mean, if your holes on the template are consistent, mine are a little wonky, <laughs> not, not enough to really notice badly, but if your holes are exactly where you need them to be, this is where the holes come out now. Can you see that? You can. You see that? Those holes could not be straighter or more better positioned because I was able to hold this flat. If you have a cradle, and you have to bend your spine to get each one of those holes, or you're doing it with a hard surface underneath, too hard. Things shift. I've had so many wonky ones come out that I had to not use. Um, and here's a really, <laughs> here's a really good example of before I found this method. These are horrible. I would never sell this. So this is one of my, um, this was one of my experiments when I started making these. And it came out so bad that um, I, I just, you know, I didn't even, I, I didn't even, I knew I wouldn't sell it. I just use it myself. In fact, it looks like it needs repair. Not now. So um, that was this. Okay, that's the cover. And, and that's the outside of the spine. Uh, too bright. I hope this video doesn't come out too bright because of the light I'm using. I, it's hard for me to judge when I'm looking at my iPad, how it's coming out. I, I don't know if I turn this off. Yeah, I think you can get a lot of shadows with that. So we'll try it this way. Like I said, if you don't see this video, there will be another one. Um, so now I have all of my signatures together with the pockets sewn. And I put these little clips on them only because they don't like to fold after they've been sewn. Um, even though I pre-fold, I score and fold the card stock. Once you sew them, they're open flat straight when I sew them. And, you know, once they do that, they, they don't want to go back. <laughs> they, they don't want to bend at all. I'm going to find my little, little jar, my little drawer. Okay, so I'm going to take all of these off because They've been sitting there for about 10 minutes, and it really helps. I mean, they have not been sitting there that long. Only while I was trying to get everything together for the video. Whoops. All right. So, I am going to show you how I do it for these. So this, I only have it bent in half. That's the only fold in this thing. And I make sure that I have these even at the top. Because sometimes the bottoms don't have the same, sometimes there's overhanging plastic on the bottoms. So I can't do it from the bottom. And this um, template does, let me back out here, move over. This template does fit these signatures exactly. So these are 8.5 by 11, so this is 8.5 long. Alright, I bend it and then... I attach, I hold it, I try and hold it as tightly into the center, into the fold, as I can. And then I clip them on opposite sides, okay? And then I make sure that I tilt it, I, I fold it up as much as I can. I find the center roll of holes that are in the fold, and I just poke right into the foam. 
Okay. And I only do two at a time because I have to go through the plastic. And this stuff is so slippery. It's so hard to sew on. And as soon as you start putting it on a surface, it slides around. So um, I go through these. I do have this marked for top because, you know, I, when I measure, I don't know if I'm doing the right, you know, if everything will fall in the same place. So you want, you want all of your signatures to have holes the same distance from the bottom and the top and all that. So it's best if you mark this and put it on so the top of the template is at the top of your signature page, okay? Bend it up. I'm gonna have to do all of these, so if you wanna fast forward through this, you can. I have more trouble getting it out than I have getting it through to make the holes. Um, so yeah. That carpet, that new carpet that we, in the place we went to see today, it was, oh my gosh, the front door opened and it was like, holy cow, chemical smell. And it's also fall. And I don't transition well from summer to fall. I love fall, don't get me wrong. But, you know, ragweed and... All the other stuff that the oak leaves that start drying up and falling off and I don't know what it is but holy cow I am congested I have a sore throat yuck just yuck so I might have to stop and take a sip of my tea while we're doing this too just to my ear hurts <laughs> and I know I'm not coming down with anything because I'm 63 I've been going through this for a while during the season change. So, especially here in Virginia, I don't think I ever had this much trouble anywhere else I've lived. And I've lived a lot of places. So, so our, where's my trash can? There it is. Our dear friend Gail. Hi, Gail. <laughs> my, my pale Gail. Let me tell you what she did, in case you didn't see it, which I'm sure you did, because a lot of you came over after she mentioned me. But in her 10 Crafty Questions video yesterday, um, she tagged me. Tag, I'm it. So I am going to desperately try this evening to write down those questions and get answers to them so I'm not blubbering tomorrow and just rambling off onto, you know, a tangent about nothing. Um, and I'm going to try and put that video together tomorrow. So look for that. <laughs> Evan, don't knock my, my little, my little Evan is, is, uh, walking around. Okay. And here's how I measure, measure my waxed thread. I just do about an inch overlap on one end. I don't know if you can see that. It's about an inch, white on white, right? And about an inch on the other end. And I pull it and I do it twice. And I need scissors. I do it twice, snip, and then I just make the rest of them the same length. So, oops, there goes my drink. I'm supposed to have more room down here, but you know, it just doesn't work that way because you got to have everything quite close by in order to make it convenient to craft. And um, it doesn't matter what room I'm in. Everything is going to be piled around me. I take out pads of paper to find paper I like for covers. And they're sitting on the floor. <laughs> Which is why I wanted to be in the basement. So I had bookcases and wall space and everything else to put things so they wouldn't be on the floor. Well, guess what? They're still on the floor. All right, we're going to put that away. I have my my threads. Now, I can do this like when I'm sitting in front of TV. It works um, because I'm not going to stab myself because I have my, my little foam lock here. So we are going to thread that needle, hopefully. Oops, yeah, that didn't work so well. 
So I hope this finds all of you doing well and enjoying your weekend. We, um, we've had some really gorgeous days in the 70s and a couple of days in the low 80s. But now, today, it was like 92, 93. And tomorrow, it's supposed to be the same in the 90s. But this is pretty typical for Virginia. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've lined up the center hole to the center hole in the spine. And I'm putting the needle through. Now let me make sure I got this all right side up first. Oh, I do. Oh, good. Yeah, make sure your, your pockets <laughs> are all facing. Because when I'm doing this, I'm flipping this thing all around. So I have to go back and double check the way the direction the pockets are going in. Because if I don't, inevitably, at least one signature will go in upside down. Okay, so this is the part I have not perfected yet. Make sure you're going in the right hole for the row you're in. I stick it through and then I go find the bottom hole or the top hole. It doesn't matter which direction you go in. So if you guys are having a, t a hard time with sewing in your signatures, this, I mean doing, I've probably sold a couple of dozen of these at this point. Now, um, and practice makes perfect. So what I do is I pull this thread in the kind of toward the hole that the thread is coming out of. So I'm pulling it this way. If I was coming out of this hole up here, I'd pull it this way. Because what I'm trying to do is get on the other side of this thread so I'm not um, poking my needle through this thread. I want to not get my needle entangled in that thread. And then the other thing this foam does is as you just saw me, I don't know if you caught that, but when you poke this through, when it sticks in this foam, it sort of holds onto it when you pick the cover up and it helps pull that needle through so you're not um, straining your thumbs and fingers and everything else as much. Okay, again, I won't just go poking this through because the hole might not be lined up very well. And then I did that. So now see, I, I'm going to slide the needle under this thread here. But when I do that, and it's also good for holding your needle when you're not using it, that way it's not rolling around somewhere and you can always find it. All right, so this thread is much longer than that thread. You could leave it like that. I'm gonna turn this light off and see if you can see better. Nope, there's just as much glare. All right, so what I'm gonna do is flip it right side up. So I want to get some of this thread over to this thread, some of this length. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this back out from underneath, and I'm gonna hold, hold the short thread, I'm gonna pull that thread a little. Oop, that's gonna be too much. And then I'm gonna go back underneath this thread. <laughs> and now that one's longer than that one. <laughs> that figures. I overdo it all the time. I don't know why. Okay. And you do want to make sure that your, your threads are pulled, you're very taut. You, you want it to be very tight. Now this is something I learned when I was working at the vet clinic. There's a thing called a surgeon's knot. So I take the one that's a little bit longer, I put it through and put it through again. So instead of just putting it through once and pulling and then trying to tie another knot and get it tight, if you put that same thread through the loop twice and then pull, you've already got a knot. You don't have to do it again. So that's one. Now, sometimes I clip these, clip these down. It just makes it a little easier not to have the, those two pages flopping around. So I take the next two pages. Oops. Uh-oh. <laughs> you can lose white thread on a white foam though. 
my other foam was green. It was much easier to keep track of. Okay. Thread the needle again. So, you know, if you're already bored, fast forward through this. You can, you can speed up any video. You go to those little three dots in the top right hand corner. Say this is your screen. There's three little dots that are vertical. And you click on that and one of those will be playback speed and you can speed it up to like whatever speed you want. I often speed up videos to 1.25 or even the next setting up from that, which I can't remember what it is because I wanna see what they're doing, but sometimes they're slow for whatever reason, and I want to just get through the video. You know, sometimes I look at videos about RVs or whatever. Not normally the crafting videos. So you can do that with this one. You're not gonna miss anything unless you just wanna see this repeated five times, which it does help to see because, let's face it, the more, you, the more you see it and the more you do it, the easier it is. Trust me. I mean, you saw how wonky those other, that other ephemera folio was. And now, because I've done so many of them, I'm much more confident with... Um, with doing these, sewing these in. So again, we're gonna go through the loop once and go through the same loop again with the same string and pull. And there you go. Okay. And for some reason I always end up upside down. <laughs> it's just, it's, just the way it goes. So I, I, again, check my pockets, make sure I didn't put them in upside down. And and I didn't stick my, my needle in its safe spot. Okay. And these threads separate really easily. So, ah, oh, my eyes are burning. My nose is running. Okay. Now this is something else I do personally. Don't have to do it this way. I, if there are five, I like to make the middle signature. If there's three, I do the same thing. I like to make the middle signature where my string end hangs from the outside. So I start from the outside. And if you wanted all of your strings to do this, you can do this on all of them. I start from the outside. I go through the signature, maybe, maybe, there you go, alrighty, and then down or up, whatever floats your boat, because there's no, no law, no sewing police, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to whack you. Okay, and then we are going to go pull this string down because I'm coming from the bottom. Stick that back through. And then in the top hole. Now watch when I pull this. See how it's stuck into the foam? All I have to do is pull it that much to get it through. And then I'm going to tuck it under, under this string that's already in there. Pull it taut. Take the longer string. Tie, tie a surgeon's knot. And pull. The bad part about doing that is, if you've sewn it wrong or forgotten to do something, you have to take those signatures out. It's a pain in the behind. <laughs> That's the only problem with the knot. So if you don't want to do it that way, and you want to be one of those people that's smart and checks it when you're all done, and then go back and knot them, you can go back and knot them after that. 
I like a challenge, so I figure what the heck. All right, so this is the fourth one. And if I weren't talking to you and showing you this, I'd be done already. That's gonna go. So I know I've mentioned this before, but I am so hooked on the show McLeod's Daughters. Oh my goodness gracious, it's all I think about. I can't wait for nighttime to come and we sit down and we watch a couple of our shows that we record from the night before. And then usually the last hour before bed, Tony will turn on McLeod's Daughters. And I'm just in love with that show. I love watching it. I'll be sad when it's over. I know I said that before, too. When I get hooked on something like that. I mean, it's got horses. They're out in the country. Not that I want to live in the country again. I hated it. But I did live in the country. Okay. This is when it gets tough. Sometimes when it gets to this one and the last one, I have a hard time getting getting the right spot. Now, I know there's a hole in there because I made the holes, right? You watched me. There we go. And then under the loop, pull the needle out, put it in its safe spot, and make that surgeon's knot. And get the fuzzy off of there. I don't know what that is. Okay. And pull. Yeah? And the last page, or last signature, rather. This is out of making this whole ephemera folio thing. This is the fastest part. And it used to be the part that took a really long time for me because I struggled. But when I had the idea to come downstairs and find my needle felting big foam block. I was like, I'm a genius. <laughs> I'm a genius. I'm just brilliant. I'm so smart. Because that thing made it so much easier. I mean, so, so much easier. I'm just so happy I thought about it. It has changed, like I said at the beginning, it has changed the way I sew in. Now, I have not taken any classes. I, I really should take, you know, like a Nick the Booksmith class or anybody who's done a journaling type class. I just watched other people do it on YouTube. And... Honestly, I mean, uh, I don't think that's a good one. See, I, what I did was I, the needle went in between some of the threads, and I don't want that. Because then if you have to adjust your thread, you can't. Because the needle has gone through the middle of it. Okay. So the last one's got to give me trouble, right? By golly, I might have gotten it. Okay. Oh. So I am also going to have to do a giveaway. Because, I mean, 500. I didn't think I'd ever get to 500. I mean, I was happy to be at 300. <laughs> <laughs> so... I am ecstatic and honored and thrilled. I just hope I can do you guys justice, or do Gail justice, actually, for, for sending you all over. So, I'm going to put this aside. I'm going to remember my needle is in there. I don't know if the glare will be any better. So, here we go. I want to show you. Here's the... I'm going to put it up close. There's the spine. Look how nice and even all those strings are. 
And if you wanted to put something on the strings, like if you're doing a journal, you want to put buttons or beads or whatever, you can easily do that. You, you pull the needle up through the hole, you string your beads or buttons on, go down through the next hole. That's all you have to do. But this, I mean, that foam thing and using the template and a and all that isn't really heavy, I mean, come on, it couldn't be any easier. And I'm really glad that I figured it out so that I could share it with you guys because it really has been a lifesaver. So they are all sewn in. And this will be one of the ephemera folios that's available tonight, Sunday, September 22nd. And I'm going to put the other one together and then take photos. And then there will be more covers to come. So there's this cover and I'm, I think I'm doing this cover next. And that's really pretty too. I'm going to have to work on the lighting for down here. So that's, that's the next cover. And then I also made this cover, which I think is my favorite. So I made that cover. And it's got, it's got butterflies, because I love butterflies, and I love pink roses. This is my favorite. So it's got that. And then I like this one, too. So there's that one, because, you know, it's got butterflies. <laughs> um, in case you didn't know, I love butterflies. And I like dragonflies. So there's that. Now, this is one of the ones that I had to glue... Um, paper on the inside so inside the pockets are white but um, I didn't double up the paper on the pockets or down inside because I wanted you to be able to fit lots of stuff in there so I did not um, I do have to sew around the edge of this one I forgot to do that so that will go in the pile to sew and then this is uh, let's see these two these two the paper was rather uh, flimsy. Um, the paper is much thinner. It was still um, two-sided, but it was much thinner. So I Mod Podged these. So these almost have like a, a leathery, and I did use matte, but it does come up kind of shiny. Oh, the fluid in my ears just changed. Probably because I'm looking up at the iPad. Whew, that was weird. And that's the inside, and I think that's very pretty with the, the yellow. So that's the inside. It's a little shiny, but, you know, I don't think that detracts from it. I think it's very pretty. And then this is the other one. And that's the inside. Just so you know that these will be available soon. Um, and so I am going to put these up as soon as I can get pockets made. I don't have pockets made, so there's that. So this one... This was not a two-sided paper. This one I have to sew around as well because um, I glued these pieces together. And this one's really sturdy, whereas these are a little flimsier. Like if you travel a lot or you go to a lot of scrapper things and, and uh, retreats and stuff, these might not hold up to that kind of stuff. Um, although with the Mod Podge on them, they're, they're much better, but they are flimsier. These are, this one is like a tank. So this one's really good. And um, this one is also paper that is back to back. So it's not as thick as this paper or this cover, but it's still pretty sturdy. And I like it. It's very pretty. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's my discovery is to get yourself a foam block. And make sure it's at least, I would say, at least two inches thick. I mean, measure your awl. If your awl is two inches, two inches long, I would definitely get a two-inch two thick foam uh, pillow thing. So I want to thank you for joining me. And look for these in the shop. And I hope that um, doing... You know, using a foam block and seeing how I did these spines, sewed these signatures in, will help you 
if you've been having trouble with sewing signatures in. I hope you could hear me clearly. I hope the glare wasn't too bad. Um, I'm going to watch this back. If it's awful, then I will definitely <laughs> do a repeat because I have a lot more covers that I have to sew pockets into. Okay, everybody, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great week. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I love you all. Hugs to everybody, and know that I'm very grateful that you're here. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great day and you're doing well, and I will be back with the 10 Crafty Questions. Look for that tomorrow or Tuesday. Hugs. Happy crafting. Bye.